morning. Um, I also wanted to thank you for having us. This is really nice that we get the chance to share some of our best practices with uh, people around the state of Ohio. Um, uh, what you're going to hear from me is going to be very similar to what you've also heard from Cheryl and from Ted. Um, two very important things uh, when you're looking at doing what's best for kids. Um, and those two important things are your ideology and culture that you have in your building. And I think Ted's really rang through as well as Cheryl's. And then also building relationship with students. Those are the key to really moving kids and, and caring for kids and filling those gaps that they have. Um, so my name is Dina Popa. I'm the instructional leader at Akron STEM High School. We are a specialty school just like Cheryl is in um, Akron Public Schools. Um, outside of Cheryl and I, we have five comprehensive traditional high schools that we pull from. Um, STEM High School, this is our eighth year of operation. We do have a STEM Middle School, which feeds us. They are celebrating their 10th year of operation. Students that attend the STEM Middle School get a guaranteed seat into my ninth grade class. Uh, we do have a small uh, community for our high school. I only accept about 110 learners in each ninth grade class coming in. Uh, just as Cheryl, we tend not to replace students. We do have a wait list, but so far into the program, they would not be on track with the rest of our kids. But we do have a wait list. We go to a student's drop. But generally, we graduate between 80 and 85 students out of those 110 that originally came to us. Um, we are unique in that we are also housed on the University of Akron campus. Uh, Cheryl's on one side of the campus, I'm kind of on the other. I'm actually in an old Akron Public School High School building that the university um, took over from the district years ago, but we um, occupied that building. And so it's easy access for my students to attend classes on campus at the university. They walk out the front door and they walk right into their university classes there. We also follow their school calendar. So um, when the uh, college semester ends in December, we also end in December. That means means my students are coming back in order to hit their days for high school um, mid to early August. And my staffing also does professional development an entire week before that. So usually the first week in August, like Cheryl, we're up and running way before other schools are up and running. So that's some of our uniqueness. We are a mastery-based school. What this means is that students have a set score that they need to hit for mastery for their standards um, and their units. Uh, in order to attain credits. Um, upon the end of the semester, if you're not averaging a C plus or better, you receive an incomplete for that credit and you are required to either retake portions of the standards that you missed or the entire uh, class again to receive credit for that. So we pride ourselves on failing forward. Uh, we as adults learn this way also. If there's something you don't do correct, you figure out what you did wrong and you go back and you remaster it and the next time you do something, um, then you master it at that time. So we allow our students that opportunity with this mastery learning. So that is unique to STEM High School. Uh, we also, as um, Akron Transitions into College and Career Academies accepted this role as a College and Career Academy for Akron. We are the Academy of Advanced Technology and Design. We offer three career technical pathways um, as our elective courses at STEM High School. One pathway is software engineering and robotics. Um, another one is environmental engineering. And our third one is biotechnology and biomimicry. So students um, elect to take uh, their elective courses in that pathway once they declare which one they're interested in. So that is unique to our school. Uh, we are grounded in problem-based learning. Um, there's a lot of collaboration. We have something in our school which we call our frontier habits. They are habits of minds that we teach students in addition to the standards. Students need to know what grit, grit and perseverance are. They need to know about self-direction. They need to know how to self-reflect to know where they are in the continuum of where they want to go for their goals. They need to know how to think critically. So all of these, which we call our STEM frontier habits, are also taught and embedded in our lessons each day. Uh, STEM High School is a member of the Ohio STEM Learning Network. Uh, we are actually the hub at Akron for Northeast Ohio for the Ohio STEM Learning Network. So they partner with us and they support our professional development. We bring um, students, uh, ambassadors, and, and um, people from other countries as well as uh, um, school districts around the state of Ohio in to see some of the components that I'm going to talk about with you today. Um, and we are a STEM designated school from the state of Ohio. Um, if we go to our report card, you can see our overall, overall grade was a B. Looking at achievement, um, achievement being um, how we align our classes. So teachers spend 
time prior to the start of school aligning their units not only to the state standards for the OST, but also the ACT standards and those frontier habits and they embed them in those lessons that they plan. Just like Cheryl, we chase the ACT. That's embedded in everything we do and we align our state standards to the ACT standards and we roll those lessons out to kids. This is our reasoning why you need to know this. What, do you, what level do you need to get to to get to that ACT level? Because we are on campus, so many of our kids do access the university classes, so that's very important. Uh, when you look at progress, looking at um, the value added, we pride ourselves on our value added at STEM High School. Uh, we designed our schedule to provide opportunities for kids to fill those gaps. So um, we are in a block schedule. At the end of each day, we have a session for 30 minutes that runs that's called Impact. It is a fluid schedule for every student in the building. And on Sunday nights, the teachers go in and pull every student based on where they fell short in the previous week's unit. And they use those 30 minutes to fill those gaps for students in the moment. So they're not waiting to the end of the semester to try to recapture some stuff. They're not waiting to the end of the grading period. This is done on a daily basis. Um, four times a year, we also um, take our schedule, which is specially designed, and kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. We completely throw it off the grid and we design what's called a build day. Uh, teachers design an hour and a half sessions all day long, sort of conference style, where students can choose to attend that based on their interest of what's going on in their classrooms. We have guests from the University of Akron that come over and help run some of those sessions. Um, we have uh, people in industry, some of our college and career academy community partners that come in. Um, we have kids that go out on externships um, and job shadowing like Cheryl uh, does also, and they get to experience what it is in the real world and make those connections to what's going on in the classroom. So we try to do that once every grading period. So that kind of helps with our achievement and our progress um, for closing the gap there. Um, our gap closing is also an A. Um, once again, it's our specially designed instruction, but it's really important beyond that specially designed instruction time that during that impact time that you have those relationships with kids. That is the key component, and both of them touched base on that quite a bit. Knowing that you're coming to a class where a teacher cares whether you're getting a C- minus or a D plus and want to get you up to where you really should be performing at perhaps that B level, and that I'm gonna pull you every week based on what your current needs are is very important to our gap closing. Um, our graduation rate is also an A. We've had 100% graduation uh, rate each year. Um, I know last year Cheryl and I both had a little glitch. Uh, we got our, our data back and we were sitting at like 99% and we were like, but we know every kid walked the stage. And so we found out there was just some small EMIS errors, but both of us can say that 100% of our kids do graduate from our schools. Um, and then last, reaching over to this prepared for success, again, my, my whole thing for my staff was this is not okay. You know, we're doing all these great things for kids and we're doing what's right for kids and we're having relationships with kids that are successful. How are we sitting at that? And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and talk you through kind of what we did. So the staff sat down and we really picked apart what are we doing that's not being captured? Because we know that we're sending kids out that are prepared. 80% of last year's senior classes took classes at the university level. 60% of last year's juniors took classes at the university level. And that's saying that they are successful. They're passing university classes. Why are we not doing this here? So as we looked, we looked at our basic structure of our schedule. What are we offering? What's not being captured here? And what we found was um, we were not capturing anything for um, advanced placement courses. We didn't offer them because our kids were going to the university. But there's still a pool of kids back at your building that are trying to get to the university that really want those rigorous courses. So we slowly, over the last two years, have replaced four of our elective courses um, with AP courses. So no longer is there environmental science for half a credit your junior and senior year. You're an AP environmental for the full year. Um, some of the parents, you know, as a challenge, said, well, my, my child doesn't want AP. Why not? 
what, what about it is not good for your child. Um, even if they test at the end and they don't gain that three on the test for college credit, if they get that two, they are more likely to be successful in a college class down the road by having that AP experience. So would you rather have them be more likely to be successful or just sit in a standard class? So that's one of the changes we made. We're gonna start collecting these points showing up on this year's report card coming up. Um, on our next report card, we should start seeing that bar move based on some of the changes that we made in the structures at our school. Um, our honors diploma, and like Cheryl talked about, we have the Innovation Generation Scholarship. We offer that. We have similar percentages to Eckerd Early College, and 100% of our kids participate in that ACT. Um, and 42, you can see score remediation free, and that helps us to um, allow them access to the university courses over there. So that's just a little bit about our high school, a little bit of our report card, but really focusing on um, your structures, your ideology of who you are and making sure everybody, the staff, the students, your parents, the community, your community partners, your businesses, know what you stand for and know what your message is for kids when they enter those doors and having them feel that sense of belonging when they walk in the door, very critical. And then making sure your structures that are in place meet the needs so that kids are getting everything they need to be successful. Last year we sat at a 50%, straight up flat 50%. We made a goal to shoot for 60% to move to the C range. We came up 7.2%. That's still success for me. So what else do we need to do? We should start moving that dial just a little bit more as we continue to add layers to capture more of this credentialing uh, with our pathways for college and career academies, more AP placement for kids. So giving them those opportunities. Um, as Cheryl said, we work with Summit Education Initiative, really looking at the ninth grade data, um, how important that 3.0 and earning six and a half credits by the end of your ninth grade year is important to being successful down the road in post-secondary. Um, some of you may even look at structures and systems and places at schools that you're familiar with. Sometimes kids don't even have the opportunity to take six and a half credits. So you have to first make sure your structures offer what they need to ensure that they're successful. Okay, thank you.